morning with uh, Deirdre Kinahan. Uh, her latest is Spinning, which is opening in Chicago, opened last night to uh, uh, critical acclaim. It received the... It received a Jeff recommendation this morning, so... And, well, and what is the Jeff rec recommendation? The, a group of judges arrive at the opening night and they decide whether or not the play will fit for a nomination in a number of categories. And if they all agree on that, they give the show a Jeff recommendation. I think what's great about it is that they do it very early in the run, which really helps the company kind of uh, sell tickets and promote the show. So your, your premiere performance of your play received this unanimous recommendation and that will be part of the marketing so that people know that this is a quality play that a number of uh, critics all unanimously agree on. Yeah, that's it. Excellent, excellent. Now you weren't always a playwright. You no. worked in computers back in the day. I did, yeah. And well, what did you do in computers? Well, it was gas actually. I left college, I did a degree in English and history, but I always wanted to, uh, I always wanted to be a writer, I always wanted to be an actress, I always wanted to work in theatre. But uh, my parents were deeply concerned that I wouldn't make a living at it. And, uh, well, they were right for a number of years. But, um, so when I left college, I was teaching for a year or two, actually. And then uh, I decided I didn't want to pursue that. And I got a job, just kind of work experience in a big firm in Dublin. I think it was about 1991, 92. And um, I was just photocopying and stuff in the personnel department, you know, kind of planning how I'd get out of all this and get into theatre. And then somebody stuck a Mac SE30. I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember them. It was oh, yeah. a box on my desk, a television set. And said, we're buying a load of these for the directors. Would you like to, you know, have a go at figuring it out? So I'd never sat in front of one of these things before, but I had uh, eight, ten hours in the day to do so. So I uh, did a little training and kind of found my way around it. And then they were aware of the fact that I had, you know, I was a qualified teacher. So I kind of hit on the idea that if I could master the software, maybe I could teach some of the software to, you know, the directors of the firm. It was a big accountancy firm. And so I just kind of found myself catapulted into the world of IT. And I worked in it for about three or four years. I was in my early 20s, so it was quite exciting, you know, like, you know, computers were really taking off, email was coming in, internet, all the directors who always had their own secretaries were suddenly kind of, you know, typing up and accessing their own documents and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I was just doing that. I was kind of the help desk operator, training people in software, and then actually setting up networks with all the kind of amazing wire or telephone guys in different branches around Ireland um, and I suppose I could have stayed in that all my friends have stayed in that now are in a fortune <laughs> but I didn't stay in that I kind of ran out of it I went traveling for a couple of years when I was about 25 to 27 and then I came back to Ireland and said right I'm now going to go into theatre so excellent well it turned I think it turned out well for everybody concerned <laughs> good um, so your first play was in a pub in Rathfarnham, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. That's right. That was the first play I ever saw when I was about seven years of age. Okay, so that yeah. was the one you saw. Yeah, that was right. the first was one it, I saw. It? Yeah, no, the first play I put on, uh, yeah, I started going to the theatre with my mother. My mother was an amazing woman and she came from a very ordinary kind of Dublin family, you know, seven kids in a, in a two-bed house, but she had always had a passion for theatre. So um, when I was about seven, she took me to a little play in a pub in Raffarnham and I just loved it. I loved the, the emotion of it and the intensity of it. And then she knew she had a partner in crime. So the two of us, she was brilliant. She took me to theatre all the time. She loved theatre and horse racing, so she brought me to both. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but theatre was what I kind of jumped into. And um, then when I came back from my travels, set up a theatre company, was an actress for a couple of years with a pal of mine, Maureen. And we kind of hit the ground running. We did a production of Lettuce and Lovage by Peter Schaefer, which is this wild comedy with both myself and Maureen playing the lead roles. And we did that in a, an old church, actually in Christ Church in Dublin. And then I became really interested in the fact that there was very few really good meaty roles for women. And uh, you know, there's a plethora of women in their 20s trying to make it in theatre and only a small number of roles and they were usually kind of crazy waifs and it just kind of drove me insane because uh, I didn't fit that bill and um, I just thought, God, there's a whole lot more to women than that. And then we began to look around for really good plays by women and we found a few. You know, we were doing plays by Brianne Lavery and April D'Angelis and Susan Laurie Parks and people like that. 
And um, then I was working with a group of women called Ruhamas Women's Project. And that was a project in Dublin that was trying to help older women get out of prostitution and form new lives for themselves. So uh, kind of a friend of my mother is an amazing kind of renegade nun had set up this program with a group of uh, older women who'd been in prostitution all their lives. And they were a tough, hardy crew. And I was kind of, uh, so Fiona asked me to come along and I was working with the women. I mean, we had this tiny little flat above a shop in a really rough end of Dublin. I remember painting it with women and sorting it out and we brought in a few computers and I was doing literacy with them and basic computer skills and then the women were all coming to see my plays and they got really interested in the, the notion of theatre and asked me would I write a play about their lives. So that was in 99. And I was kind of going, well, what I'll do is I'll bring in a writer, a real writer who'll work with you, and maybe I'll act in it, or, yeah, or my company will do it, you know? And they said, no, no, we know you. We've known you now for two years. You're going to write it. You didn't mess with these ladies. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll give it a go. So that was my first play. It was called Bay Carnet, which was an old Irish term for prostitutes mm -hmm. because it was actually a legal profession in Ireland, in Gaelic Ireland, quite a respected profession. So they were called Baker and Women of the Flesh. So I wrote a play that wasn't at all voyeuristic. It was about the fact that they were wives, mothers, daughters, sisters, and how brutally their occupation and society's response to their occupation affected their lives. So that was the first play that I wrote in 99. And it, it was kind of very well received in Dublin and toured about a bit. And I thought, oh, I quite like this. <laughs> Maybe I'll try it again. So it's really thanks to those women I went into to writing. Very good. Now, in uh, the article to which we'll link, uh, you mentioned that you think that Dublin today is poorer in diversity, possibly yeah. theatrically. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you mean by that, and, and, and what do you intend to do about it? Yeah, well, I mean, I suppose, you know, as you all know, Ireland was, it was in a kind of a Celtic tiger zone for a number of years in the 90s and early 2000s, and then we hit the wall um, economically, and it was a really ferocious fall for the country. And I think everybody felt it quite deeply, you know, um, you know, psychologically as a nation, you know, a kind of post-colonial and attitude and it all just felt a bit mucky. We were kind of mortified by our behaviour during the Celtic Tiger and the kind of party all mentality and then that we just so unceremoniously kind of collapsed. So I think it was an extraordinary time for Irish people to take a good hard look at themselves and see who are we and where have we come from, and particularly a hundred years after the, the state was founded, we're kind of still in the throes of all of that. But one of the disastrous consequences of the recession was that arts funding was slashed. And obviously people had a lot less money in their pockets, so audiences dropped dramatically. So like when I was a kid, you know, before the Celtic boom or before the Celtic tiger or before we even knew it was coming, Dublin was actually quite rich in terms of um, diversity in theatre. And what I mean by that is we had a fabulous little theatre called The Focus, set up by a woman called Deirdre O'Connell, who was a Stanislavski uh, trained actress. From New she was Irish, but she had trained in New York. <clears throat> she had this amazing little space on Fitzwilliam uh, Square that devoted itself to American theatre, contemporary American theatre. So I was seeing plays by Tracy Letts and Marcia Norman and Sarah Rule and all of these amazing people. And uh, then, you know, we had a, a plethora of independent theatre companies. But as they all grew through the Celtic Tiger, once the recession hit, bang, all 23 independent theatre companies disappeared overnight. And all the big established mm. companies kind of fell into, you know, conservative kickback mode and just returned to the old, what they would consider tried and trusted favourites, you know? So like we were back to Shakespeare and Shaw and, you know, contemporary theatre hit it, you know, really hit the wall. So despite that, there's been some great work coming out in the last few years, but I think we really need to adjust and, uh, you know, return to, you know, start doing international work again. Uh, let, I'd like to talk a little bit, if we will, about your writing process. Uh, how do you approach writing a play? How long does it take you to write? And how do you know when it's done? Yeah. Well, I'm very lucky. Because I started off writing for my own theatre company, I was always heading towards production. So uh, every play I've ever written has been done, which is quite an extraordinary thing for somebody who's been writing for 16 years. Because initially, 
you know, I was producing them myself with my own company, and we would be commissioned by a county council or by another theatre or whatever who would co-produce with us. So I always kind of had the privilege of working with a director who was going to direct the show. So my process has grown out of that. I mean, now I don't have my own theatre company anymore. I'm completely freelance and I write for companies all over the world. But the process kind of remains the same. I'm a very collaborative person. I believe that theatre is a very collaborative um, and dynamic entity. So whilst I'm very much the writer who, you know, puts the words on the page, and I do that before we go into rehearsal. I do love working with directors and dramaturgs. I would normally write about five or six drafts of a play, and every draft would go to the director or the dramaturg, if there's one uh, associated with the theatre company, and then we'd sit down and we'd have a session of notes. And at the way I write a play, plays form in my head for years before I write them. I'd have an idea, something would hit me, it'd be a radio interview, it'd be a little piece I'd read in the paper, it would be some kind of event that just stayed in my head and there was something shocking about it or something that moved me about it or something that was very new in it or something I wanted to explore and that would roll around in my head for a while because I'm always working on lots of different projects and for lots of different companies and in lots of different countries so I can't necessarily sit down and start when the idea forms. So um, what I do then is normally I would get a commission from a company that say you know dude we'd love to work with you what are you thinking of and I'd pull one of those ideas out of the the, the, the subconscious and I'd say well I really you know want to play, write a play about forgiveness or really want to play about grief or whatever and I'd talk to them about my idea and then they'd say yeah great we'll commission that and that's the start of the process so I'd write a first draft which I always feel is like the bedrock the first mm -hmm. draft is the initial cut into the idea it's when you're creating a story around the theme a way of exploring the theme you're figuring out who the characters are you're figuring out where they are and then you just sit down and start writing and you just need to get to the end that's my process and normally I would have a very strong scene in my head that's the very core of the play and it might come at the middle or at the end it's one of the first things I write and it rarely changes. Everything around it will change as I figure out how we move up to that point or how we move beyond it. Or so, so that's normally how I find it works for me. Then I would sit down with the first draft with the director and the dramaturg and they'd say, Ooh, right, great, you know, you know, we either really get where you're going with this or we're a bit confused about things. And, you know, why does Connor make those decisions? And I talk away about it, and it seems that my process is I have it all in my head, but I'm slow to put it on stage. I don't overwrite, I kind of underwrite mm -hmm. in the, you know, um, and actually that's very much part of my style. Even when I get to the final moment, I leave a lot for the audience to figure out, to add in, because I believe in involving an audience in a play, letting them use their imagination, letting them use their wit and their intelligence to kind of follow what's going on. <clears throat> I'm going to believe in audiences everywhere. We all respond to story. It's built into us. It's in our DNA. So, um, so that's the process. So it's usually about five or six drafts. Normally, from commission to production is about two years. Mm. But I would, I, I would be working, like at the moment I'm, you know, I'm in the middle of two screenplays and I have two or three plays on the go. So um, you know, that can change. In Ireland it's usually about two years from commission to production. Uh, when I write for other international companies it just fits in with whatever their schedule is. I mean I've just written one for the old Vic in six months that goes into rehearsal in June. That was crazy. <laughs> but uh, you know it's usually a longer process. Your play that's currently running in Chicago is Spinning. That's right. Uh, tell us about Spinning, uh, why we should see it, and where uh, we can find it. Okay, Spinning is on in the Den Theatre uh, in Milwaukee Avenue in Chicago, and it's produced by the Irish Theatre Company. And it's the first time I've worked with the Irish Theatre Company, but it is the second time I've had a play in Chicago. I had a play called Moment here three or four years ago. That was a big hit for another company called Steep. Uh, Spinning is a play I'm very close to. I only wrote it three years ago. It was in the Dublin Theatre Festival in 2014 and it was <clears throat> really well received there and this is the first international production of it so it's a real test case for me to see if spinning actually hits with international audiences and it's relevant to them and will have a life. It's a very um, 
I suppose it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a play about a particular social issue. It's a very powerful, dramatic, intense, dark production about uh, a man who's a bit of an old-fashioned man who has a notion of how his life is going to play out. He imagines the wife, the house, the child, you know, the working career, and that's his path. He marries a fabulous woman called Jen. They're very much in love initially. Huge sexual frisson between the two of them. But she starts to move beyond him. She's a woman who wants more out of life. She pictures their life very differently and the marriage begins to break down. He can't cope with this. He never imagined this. And he starts to lose his grip. Uh, they break up. There's uh, a bit of a custody battle. She gets custody of the child. He only sees the child at weekends. He's furious about this. He feels that everybody's turning against him. And we're kind of looking at his disintegration. And one day he kidnaps his daughter uh, and takes her away with disastrous consequences. And his whole world and his whole story comes crashing into the life of another woman, a very contemporary Irish woman, Susan, who runs her own business as a single mother, has a beautiful daughter, Annie. Annie gets involved with Connor, and their two stories kind of spin into tragedy. And um, it's a play that was very much inspired by the phenomenon in Ireland of, um, of kidnapping, which is, um, becoming much more prevalent than it was years ago. And I think a lot of it is because Ireland is a deeply conservative, patriarchal society that is turning into something else, morphing into something else. And a lot of people are getting lost in that change. And I think I'm not judging in this play at all. Nobody's bad, nobody's all bad, nobody's all good. It's not anybody's necessarily anybody's fault. What I'm trying to do is get in and under why people do extraordinary things, um, you know, why they go so much against type, what can happen when love turns, and how easy it is for your life to spin in a direction you would never have imagined. Sounds fairly dark. <laughs> you know, there's, a, there's a bit of laughter in it too. There's great characters in it, and I think that's the really important thing. I mean, if you, I mean, I write plays that are hugely popular and accessible, but they're always about very dark themes. Mm. You know, because I believe theatre can look into the dark corners of the world, but in a very safe place. And if you create strong, empathetic, human characters that your audience can connect with, well, then they'll go with you on any journey. And I think there's the potential in all of us for the disaster. For disaster. There's also the potential in all of us for great good. And, you know, we see Connor do terrible things, but then we see him kind of slightly redeem himself towards the end. So I think one of the questions in a lot of my plays is, do we believe in rehabilitation? Mm. Do we believe in redemption? You know, do we believe in people? And I certainly do. And what are you working on now that you're excited about? Uh, I'm in a very, I'm very excited about a lot of things, I have to be honest. This has been an amazing year for me, 2016. Uh, you know, with a lot of productions in the States, and I had a new production of, a, 20, of a, a play called Wild Sky, which was written in commemoration of 1916, Our Revolution. And that was a big success in Dublin, and that was really important to me because I'm really kind of connected with our history, and I felt that moment was so important, and I wanted our commemorations to be really kind of dignified and honest and real and dig into the mess that was 1916 and what came out of it and who we are as a result of it. So I'm kind of really proud of, of where Ireland's going in, in relation to that and the artistic work that's been done around it. And then now, I mean, I've written a play, as I said, for the Old Vic in London that opens in the summer called Rise. It's a huge community project with a cast of 150, a live band, a chorus, a movement group. It's just going to be amazing. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then I'm writing a play for Manhattan Theatre Club in New York. That's the one that I'm really concentrating on at the moment when I go back to Ireland. That's to be in by the end of the summer. So I'm right, that's set in St. Petersburg in the Second World War. So I'm actually going to Russia uh, at late summer to uh, do a bit of research there. And I'm loving everything I'm reading about that and the kind of the world that I'm trying to get into. And then I'm writing another 
uh, play for a fish handle theatre company who originally did spinning and I have a couple of screenplays but they're always much much longer projects so I think it's really uh, Lydia Glynn which is my MTC play is what I'm going to just completely focus on when I go back. Well, that sounds very exciting. Well, uh, Deidre Kinahan, thank you very much for taking a couple minutes out of what is apparently a really busy schedule. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on all your success and on Spinning's reception here in Chicago. Brilliant. Uh, we'll put links in to how people can order tickets to Spinning, and I'll see what I can find out about your other productions coming up this year. Possibly we can link to those as well as, as people are looking around in New York or in uh, the Old Vic for something to do. Lovely. So, thank Thanks you for your time. Pleasure meeting you, and best of luck. Thanks a minute. Thanks, Val.